Have you ever wondered if attaching your smartphone to your telescope and using it as a finder scope is a good idea? Could this be as easy as downloading a good astronomy app, mounting the phone to the telescope and starting observing the night sky? Well, I argue that it is that easy, sort of. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it so that hopefully by the end of this video, you will be able to do it yourself as well. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to Big Observatory. Ever since I downloaded my first astronomy app on my smartphone a few years ago, I fell in love with the idea of using my phone to help me identify the objects as I navigate the night sky with my telescope. But I never really got to try out my idea. Earlier this year, however, I came across the mobile app Stellarium and it rekindled that old vision I had. So this time around, I decided to finally give it a try. The idea here was to find a way to attach my old smartphone to my manually controlled 12-inch Dobsonian telescope, download and install the app Stellarium and see if this would allow me not only to identify the objects I was pointing the telescope at, but also help me accurately navigate and find any object that is in the app's database by simply following the directions on my smartphone screen. So, in order for this to work, I first had to find a way to attach my phone to the telescope without me needing to replace my current optical finder scope. That is because I really enjoy my right angle finder scope and I don't want to have to choose between one and the other. So I looked for a possibility that would allow me to have both devices attached to the telescope at the same time. After a bit of research online, I came across this bad boy. It's a finder scope mount that supports up to three finders simultaneously. It fits in the existing finder bracket and allows me to mount my existing finder scope and smartphone to the telescope at the same time. The second item I needed was a stable and adjustable smartphone holder that featured a dovetail or vixen style bar to insert into the finder bracket of the mount. Thankfully, these are cheap and easy to find online. The only problem with fixed smartphone holders, as they are usually are, is that they are well fixed and this would surely make aligning the smartphone with a telescope later on very difficult. So I needed something that would allow me to freely adjust the position of the smartphone once attached to the telescope. The solution came in form of a mini tripod ball head that would be situated between the phone holder and the finder's bracket on the mount. These are also inexpensive and easy to come by. I leave a link to each of these products in the description below for you to check out later if you want. And lastly, in terms of hardware, I needed my trusty old smartphone that I just recently upgraded from. It's a three-year-old Google Pixel 4 running Android 13. Here it's important to note that any old smartphone will do, as long as it's relatively up-to-date in terms of its OS. Keep this in mind as it might be a requirement to run your desired astronomy app. Speaking of apps, in terms of software, my astronomy mobile app of choice is, as already mentioned, Stellarium. It's a great and very helpful tool when it comes to astronomy. I use it on my PC all the time in order to plan my observing sessions and now I have downloaded the mobile version on my phone as well. There is a free and a paid version of this mobile app and since most of the basic functionalities are included in the free version as well, you could simply start with that and then upgrade to the plus version should you feel the need to later on. Both versions have access to a huge database of objects which you can search for. Once an object is selected, the app will direct you to its location in the sky. Here I'm using the plus version as it allows me to use the app offline and also to zoom in as much as possible to see the object I'm interested in. Oh, and it features a night mode as well, which is very handy at night. 
The app also allows you to set up and configure multiple telescopes and eyepieces, which then can be used to simulate the field of view seen through the telescope as you navigate the night sky. I leave a link to Stellarium in the description below as well. So, after putting everything together, the final setup looks like this. I'm still experimenting with the order of positioning. I'm not sure if the first device starting from the focuser should be the optical finder scope or the smartphone. I'll have to do more tests and see what feels more comfortable to use. But I find it looks quite good. What do you think? Now, I'm sure you guys are very interested in finding out if this setup actually works. Well, for the most part, it really does. There are only some minor aspects to consider when using it outside. The first thing being that depending on the astronomy app you choose, you will be prompted to calibrate the phone's sensors at least once during an observing session. And this can sometimes be annoying, especially if the message comes right after you just finished aligning everything. That is why I learned to do this right at the beginning. Another aspect you need to consider is the extra weight of the whole assembly, adapter, holder and smartphone. This can get heavy very quickly and you need to keep an eye on the balance of the telescope. I also recommend using a second phone if you have one and not your main smartphone for this, since it will have to stay on the telescope once everything is aligned. So you won't really have access to your phone during the entire observing session. Also, keep in mind that the phone's battery might drain faster when there is an app constantly running in the foreground keeping the display on all the time. The battery will also drain faster the colder the temperature outside is. Here it might be a good idea to think about an external power supply. The process of aligning the smartphone with a telescope can also be a bit tedious sometimes, as there are a few knobs that need to be adjusted and tightened down before everything is aligned properly. But this is something that gets easier the more often you do it. And lastly, there is this thing about accuracy. You need to keep in mind that this setup isn't perfectly accurate. And it doesn't have to be. If I align everything as best I can, it can get decently accurate and allow me to zero in on targets up to a magnification of 120x or so. Beyond this value, the accuracy starts falling apart. This means that for DSO observations, a setup like this can work very well, since the magnifications used are rather low. When it comes to planetary observations, it becomes a bit more challenging to find and center objects in your field of view. But thankfully, planets in general aren't that hard to find in the night sky anyway. I've only used this setup a couple of times so far, and I already love it. It's not comparable to a fully-fledged go-to setup, and yes, it does have a couple of shortcomings, but I quickly learned to navigate around them, and now I can say that this setup really makes finding and identifying DSOs that much easier compared to other more traditional methods where I usually rely on printed star charts. Not only is navigating the night sky with a manually controlled telescope much easier this way, it also gives you a reason to take that old smartphone out of the drawer and use it once more, instead of just throwing it away. This also helps the environment a bit, so everybody wins. But these are only my thoughts on this matter. I'm curious to find out what you guys think. Would you try out something similar? Or maybe you have a similar setup in use already? Let me know in the comments below. Alright, that's been it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.